Hey guys, what's up? Brian here. Thanks for tuning in today. I remember when I first got a warrior and I joined the forum. It was hard to navigate. I hadn't posted anything, so I couldn't add pictures. Everyone seemed to talk in code, LCV, AIS, FPR, VBAC, and on and on. It was pretty overwhelming at first, and I think that sometimes I forget that. I forget that we were all new to the warrior at some point, and some of the things that we take for granted are still confusing to people who are just starting out. For some people, this may be their first motorcycle and their first real experience with working on something and learning how to try and do things themselves. Now when I make a video, I really try to make it for someone who may not be all that mechanically inclined and may not have a background in working on things. Now it takes a little bit more time, but I think that it gives people the confidence to get out there and tackle these things themselves, rather than sending it to someone who will charge an arm and a leg and may not have ever even seen or worked on a warrior themselves. Now I know for a lot of us, the forum is the go-to place when we look for information. Whether it be mods, maintenance, or just specs, the forum is the biggest source for knowledge on these bikes, and Mike, also known as Arizona Warrior, has done a phenomenal job running it. It has been cataloged over the years and has all the information and knowledge that you could think of for these bikes. I had a subscriber comment the other day asking about big air kits. I went on the forum and found a couple of write-ups by Leader Deuce and Red Horse on doing a DIY big air kit, and today we're going to go over that. So sit back, grab a beer, a joint, or whatever your pleasure, and let's dive into doing a nice, clean, DIY Velocity big air kit. First thing that we're going to want to do is purchase the parts and get everything situated. There are many different options you can choose from in doing a do-it-yourself Big Air or Velocity Big Air kit. Now these two kits are almost the exact same, but the VBAC has stocks between the throttle bodies and the filters. Now in this video, we'll actually be talking about the VBAC kit, but you can use it for a Big Air kit as well. You just put the filters directly to the throttle bodies in that case. Now the first thing that we're going to talk about are the filters. Now you have many different options when it comes to them. You can choose to go with a company like k &N, or if you want to save just a little bit of money, you can go with filters such as Moxie, which are actually the filters that Church Key sends out with his VBAC kits. Now the main thing is to be sure that you get a filter that's going to fit up to the throttle bodies or the stacks. Now the throttle bodies measure right at around 1 and 7 eighths of an inch in diameter, and I'll leave links below to a few different filters and all the parts that I talk about today, so check those out. Now you will need two large filters for the throttle bodies and one or two small ones for the crankcase vent. Another option you'll need to choose is whether or not you want the stacks for the VBAC or if you want to stick with just a big air kit. Now if you decide to go with the VBAC kit, you can pull the stock stacks from the air box once it is removed and reuse those. Or you can just purchase exhaust J-tube and cut it down to size. You can get both stacks from one piece and you can usually get the J-tube for under $20 so it's not going to break the bank. It will require you to cut them down to size and possibly a little trial and error before you can get them cut just right to sit under the tank. Just take your time, measure twice, and always cut long. It's a lot easier to take metal away than to add it. You'll also need a few zip ties, about 2 foot of 3 8 inch hose, various fuel injection clamps, and a few inches of 2 inch rubber tubing or silicone tubing. Now the first thing that you'll want to do is remove the fuel tank to give you access to the stock air box. If you need help with that, I'll leave a link in the top right hand corner to a video over removing the tank. Now from there, we're going to be removing the stock air box. We will start with removing the right side coffin air box. You'll need to loosen the clamp for the duct that connects the coffin and the stock air box. It should be a 3mm Allen and it may be easier if you come from the top of the box. You may also have to move the wire harness out of the way to get access. From there, you can remove the two 5mm Allen bolts on the front of the coffin and pull it away. It will also be attached to the bottom, but this is just a rubber bushing and pulls right out. From here, we will move to the left front of the air box and remove the air pressure sensor. First, you'll need to disconnect the electrical connector and then the two Allen bolts holding it to the box. You'll remove the sensor and set it aside to reuse later. After that, we will move to the left side rear portion of the air box and you'll find a small plastic box that has two hoses coming off of it to the AIS system. Remove these two hoses and the two bolts holding this box in place. From here, you will look under the air box and unscrew the two clamps holding the boot to the throttle bodies. This is the view from the left side, but you'll also have another clamp on the right side as well. 
Next, we will remove the air temperature sensor. In the very front right side of the air box, you'll find a brass colored connector. Follow the wires back and unplug from the electrical connection. From there, we're going to come back a little bit and find the tube that is the supply line for the LCV. You'll remove the hose and unbolt the bracket. You'll also need to disconnect the connector from the manifold pressure sensor. You'll need to disconnect the sensor from the tube on the bottom as well as from the bracket. You'll then reconnect the tube and zip tie it to your frame. Next, we will come up to the left front corner of the air box and remove the small hose coming out. We will also remove it from the T-fitting and cap off with a rubber nipple. Next, you'll come to the right side of the box where you will find two vacuum lines that are clipped to the air box. Go ahead and unclip them. After that, we're going to come back up to the top of the tank and remove the 5mm Allen bolt that is holding the stock air box in. Last thing, on the rear of the air box, you'll find a hose coming off that you'll need to detach. We should be ready to remove the stock air box now. So go ahead and pull that and it's nice to have some clean rags or towels to put in or at least over your throttle bodies. Don't really want anything getting inside of there. Next, remove the air temperature sensor that is still in the right side of the air box and set that aside to reattach later. On the back side of the throttle bodies, you'll find a tube coming from the right rear cylinder of the bike. Go ahead and remove that tube and replace with a new 3 8 inch tube and run that along the frame, under the tank, and out of the back of the bike. I secured mine with a clamp and you can see how I ran it out the back side of the bike near the rear brake fluid reservoir. You can also leave the stock hose and attach a small pod filter instead. Now we're ready to actually start installing the big air kit. First you'll come up to the front and find the three hoses coming off the bracket right behind your coils. You'll take the center one and disconnect the hose and attach your small pod filter and secure with an adjustable hose clamp. Then you'll want to clean the throttle bodies. Like I said, you don't want anything falling in them. Then take your stock air stacks and connect them to the throttle bodies with an adjustable clamp. If you decide to cut stacks out, you will need to connect them to the throttle bodies using the two inch rubber or silicone hose and the clamps. Now you can use radiator hose or whatever you choose. It just needs to be two inches wide to fit the stacks in the throttle bodies. Cutting your own stacks will take some trial and error to get them cut where everything sits in there just right. Now if it was me, like I said, I'd start long and take off little by little until I got it to the right angle and length. Also, always be sure to use compressed air or something and blow them out. You definitely don't want any metal shavings falling into the throttle bodies as you're trying to fit these into place. If you're cutting your own stacks, fit the two inch tubes over the throttle bodies and make sure they're seated all the way. Go ahead and clamp these into place and secure with an adjustable hose clamp. Now if you decide you don't want stacks, you can also take your filters and connect them directly to the throttle bodies and that will just make a big air kit instead of a velocity big air kit. Again, if you're making your own stacks and have cut them down to where you're happy with the way that everything is sitting, then you can take your filters and connect them to the top of the stacks and secure them with the clamp. You can then insert the other end into the hoses that are already connected to the throttle bodies. Rotate them into place until you're happy and use another clamp to connect the stacks to the hose and tighten into place. Now if you decide to use the stacks from the air box, you can just place your filters on the other end and secure with another hose clamp. Next, you can take your air temperature and pressure sensors that we set aside earlier and reconnect them. Now you can zip tie these directly to the frame or fabricate something for them to sit on. The kits that you purchase will actually have plates that you can install these in. Now if you plan on relocating your coils, you can also order a plate from Akita Dog on the forum and it will have a place for the coils as well as a place for these sensors. Now if you go with the K&N filters, you can actually attach the air temperature sensor directly to the air filter. From here, check all your connections and make sure that everything is secured and all your electrical connections are good to go as well. Go ahead and replace your fuel tank and you should be good to go. Congratulations, you just did a nice, clean, big air kit. Hopefully you saved some money and learned a little bit in the process. Plug and filter changes or cleanings will now be a lot easier. Last thing to do, start that bitch up and go for a ride. Guys, thanks for tuning in today. I really appreciate you being here. I hope this video was able to walk you through doing a nice DIY VBAC and at the same time saved you some money. Of course, if this is something that you're not comfortable doing, cutting down pipes, tracking down parts, and making sure that you've got everything right, they do sell kits from Barron's, Patrick Racing, and Church Key from the forum also has his VBAC that he sells as well, and I'll leave links down below for all those options. 
I want to personally thank both Leader Deuce and Red Horse for their write-ups and Arizona Warrior for all that he does on the forum. Also want to give a shout out to Church Key for his kit on my bike. Having it on already was a big help in making this video. Now it's people like them and everyone else who contributes that makes the forum the best place to go for information on these bikes. I can't forget Matt Riles and Jay Cruz for their help in pictures on this as well. I couldn't have done it without you guys. I also want to congratulate Leader Deuce and R. Colligan too on their new titles in the forum. Thanks for taking the time to keep all of this going. Also, I have a subscriber in Poland looking for a tank. Even one with slight damage would be okay as long as it has not been repaired. If you're near there or have one that you're wanting to sell and ship, email me and I'll get you in touch with the buyer. Be sure to like and share this video guys, and if you're not subscribed, I really don't know what you're doing with your life. Scroll down, hit that subscribe button, and while you're there, hit that bell next to it and you'll get notified when my new videos come out. We got a little bit over a month before someone's going to win that left side cleanup kit, so be sure to be watching for more information on that in the next coming weeks. Other than that guys, we'll see you next time.